Hey YouTube, today we're gonna cover the REST client VS Code plugin. We're gonna start by creating a couple of basic tests using different HTTP methods. We're then gonna go into how you can use variables to make your testing environment a little bit easier. And then we're gonna end by how you can use different environments to quickly switch between the targets that you're testing. Okay, so before we hop into the plugin itself, I actually want to show off the API that I built that we're gonna be testing with. It's actually two APIs that I have built in a single file that are both pretty basic. We have one request that's just a basic Git request on the root of the API. We have another one that's a post, and this post will handle whether or not we send a body along with. We're basically just echoing it back out to the requester. And then I also am handling if there is no body sent, we just want to send a basic message that we got the post. This request here is only going to send authorized if we include this API key that goes along with the request, and then it's going to send a 401 in case we're not authorized. And then to simulate multiple environments, I actually have a second uh, Express app that I built up, which is a single GET request on the root, listening on port 9090. Okay, so to install the extension, let's go to the extensions panel on the left-hand side of VS Code, get rid of whatever is in there, and search for a REST client. And this is the one you want to be installing. It's by Hao Chao Mao. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. But just go ahead and select it and then click install. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So now let's head back into the Explorer section of our VS Code. And let's go ahead and start creating some files. So the file extension that you're going to want to use for the REST client is actually .htp. So I can put in here mytests.http. And now we can start adding our tests in here. So in order to tell the Rust client what kind of request you're going to be make, you start off with the method. In this case, we're going to use git as the method name. And then we're also going to type in the URL, which we want to access. So HTTP colon slash slash localhost. And then my first environment I have running on port 9000. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And you'll notice above this, there is a little button here that says send request or a little text here that says send request. If you click on that, um, on the right hand side, the extension is going to open up another pane that shows the complete output from the request itself. So it includes details such as the version of HTTP it's using, the response code, all of the associated headers that come along with it, and then here is the response body right there. Now in order to add multiple requests into a single file, which is one of my favorite features, all you have to do is enter in uh, three hash marks between it, and then you can start adding more things. So if you recall back from the API, we also have a request to test out a post. So I'll hit post and then type in HTTP colon slash slash localhost 9000 again. And then if I save this again, click on send request. You can see on the right hand side, we have a different response here of got the post. The plugin also supports adding headers and a request body. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Um, we want to send some JSON along and let our API parse it out and send the response back. So what we're going to do on the next line is we're going to add our header. Uh, we're going to add content type, add a colon, and then type in what comes afterwards. So in this case, application slash JSON is what we're interested in sending to the API. Now, if you return twice to add a space there, uh, the client is smart enough to know that you're going to start adding some, some kind of a request body into this request. So let's open up a new JSON object. Let's go ahead and say message for the object key we're going to put in here. And we'll just say hello world. Go ahead and save that. And now if I send this request, you can see the response changed based on the way our API is defined. We're more or less echoing back that same object that was sent along. So now let's add another test for our authenticated endpoint that we had created. Uh, we're going to create another git request. Let's add another space there. Git request, HTTP, colon slash slash, localhost 9000. And forward slash auth endpoint is the URI that I had specified. And let's add an authorization header into this uh, request. And I have it hard coded to my API key 123. Let's go ahead and send that. And you can see we're getting authorized here. So the API key is coming across correctly. Now, if I chose not to send the API key along with it and I sent the same request, you can see the status on the response is 401 unauthorized, which means um, we're properly testing our authentication. Now, one of the things that um, you might not want to do, especially because these are all going to the same API, is continue to type localhost 9000 over and over and over again. So the REST client plugin for VS Code actually supports uh, environment variables or just variables in general. There's actually different kinds of variables you can define. The first one being a local variable inside of the file itself. You can create these towards the top of the file by typing an at sign and then the name of your uh, variable. So we're going to choose host name because that's what we're going to name our variable equals. And then I'll just set this to HTTP colon slash slash localhost 9000. 
And then what we can do is we can replace all of our localhost 9000s down here with a double curly bracket and then paste in your variable name. And when we save this and we'll send the request again, you can see we're still getting the same response because the plugin is interpreting this variable and replacing it down here. And you can do this with every single one of the requests down below and we'll retest all of these requests. So we've replaced all of our all of the localhost 9000s with our hostname variable. We'll save it and then let's just cycle through and test each one of these requests. Okay, everything seems to be working properly here. So now what do you do if you want to test out different environments? Well, the REST plugin actually supports the concepts of multiple environments. So in order to add your environments into the settings file, I'm going to type in control shift P as my hotkey and we're going to open up settings. We will open the settings UI and we're going to let this let the settings UI create the necessary JSON uh, settings in our project. And I'm going to start typing in REST client. And then before I actually find the setting, I'm going to switch to workspace so we can keep the environment variables with our workspace itself. Scroll down so you find REST client environment variables and click edit in settings.json. You'll notice that VS Code is automatically going to create a, a new folder called .VS Code on the left-hand side with settings.json inside of it. And here's pretty much where we can store our different environment variables. By default, you have this dollar signed shared environment, and this is, these environment variables are shared across all environments. So if we had a single API key, for instance, it, uh, we'll say API key, and then we'll type in my API key one, two, three. And now anytime that I use that, this API key environment variable, it's going to reference these variables. So now I can access the API key variable regardless of what environment I'm in. But the real magic behind this comes between switching with environments. So say you have two environments, a say a local environment and a development environment that's hosted somewhere out on a server or in the cloud somewhere. Uh, we can set the names of our environments by nesting a new object inside of uh, this rest-client.environment variables object in our settings.json. So let's say, uh, let's just pretend that we're running local in dev. So I'm gonna type in local environment here and then let's open a new object. And let's type in hostname because that's what we've been using for our variable inside our file. And let's just go ahead and type in for the hostname HTTP colon slash slash localhost 9000. Like that. And now if I save this, let's head back into our mytests.htp and we're going to eliminate this first line because we want to get the variable outside of the local file. You'll notice that the client is the the plugin is highlighting this and saying it cannot figure out what's going on here because we don't have a variable defined here and we don't have any environments set. So in order to switch environments inside of VS Code, uh, Control Alt and E is the command you're looking for, and you'll see the environments where we default to no environment, but local env is also listed because that's what we set our local environment name to. So once we click this, you'll see the red squigglies go away. And also in the bottom right hand corner, the environment name has changed to local ENV as a quick reference to what environment you're currently in. If I send this request, you'll see we're getting the proper response because we are sending it to localhost 9000. But I have another API that is set up on 9090 to kind of simulate a different environment. So let's go ahead and add that one now. We'll call this dev environment. Open another object, same thing. We'll do host name in here. And let's type in HTTP colon slash slash localhost 9090. Go ahead and save that. Head back into our folder here. Now we're still in the local environment, so I'm going to use that command again. Control Alt E to change environments. And let's select our dev environment. Now, if I hover over this, the plugin also shows you whatever the current active environment is. In this case, it's localhost 9090. So if I click send request, you'll see we're getting a different response. Hello from the other environment, because that's what I have defined on my API. And for the sake of demonstrating that the API key and variable is being shared across environments, let's go ahead and replace out the authorization with the double uh, curly bracket and we'll say API key and save this. Now, if I hover over this, you'll see it's set to my API key one, two, three. And even if I switch over to the local environment and I hover over this, it's still my API key one, two, three, because that is one of the shared environment shared variables between the different environments, even though my hostname has changed back to localhost 9000. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share it out to your friends. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. If you're looking for help on an issue or just want to collaborate with other developers, be sure to join my Discord by clicking the fullstack.chat link in the description below or just enter it into your browser to join. Thank you so much and have a great day.